Are WWE attempting to steal AEW talent? We'll talk about it. Plus, an NXT star hints at a main roster call-up and a WWE Hall of Famer has been offered a retirement match. What did they say? Find out in the wrestling news right now. <laughs> WWE have been intense in their... Not that intense, thankfully. <laughs> They've been intense in their move to change... The, the dynamic of the company since Triple H, Paul Levesque, took control of head of creative and head of talent relations. We've seen what he's doing as head of creative, and now we're starting to see what he's doing as head of talent relations. Very aggressive approach. And Fightful Select gives some details on just how aggressive that is. Now, I know nothing about contracts, Tom, but this reminds me of Ashley Cole's transfer from Arsenal to Chelsea in the mid noughties And you'll see for why now. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Fightful Select have been reporting. A, so, a, slow, uh, a source close to AEW tells Fightful Select as the tea bags fall that a noble AEW talent who is known to be under contract has reported to AEW management that WWE had reached out to them about coming to WWE. We're told the talent made it clear they are happy with AEW and felt like higher ups deserve to know. I guess that's nice, but it's the initial approach that reminds me of the tapping up scandal of the mm, mid noughties The tap up scandal. Oh, yes. The tap-up scandal from the tap-in king. Mm. That's quite a thing there. Yeah, so this is, a again, as they say, the source close to Fightful. They actually spoke to the person in question who had been approached, and they said they hadn't had direct conversation with WWE's uh, talent liaison. And they just said, look, speak to my people. Mm. My people will call your people. And then they went to Tony and went, Tony, this has happened. Um, and and then so he went, oh! <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> he burst through the he burst through the roof of Jacksonville. He morphed into that thing from Stranger Things and slithered <laughs> across America from Florida. Oh, to Orlando. That's in the same place, Ross. He slithered across Orlando, Florida, and it just went into Triple H's office. And went, <laughs> That's a lovely image. Stay away from me. <laughs> Stay away from my friends. Uh, so yeah. So this is. I mean, potentially a little bit. Illegal? Is it illegal? I don't know, Tom. I don't That's really a, it's know. just the fact that you know it's a, a, it's a bit of, naughty, isn't it? A properly under contract talent, as we're learning here, and then W have gone. Yeah, you, well, you, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like a bit like there's a, a window, maybe when a contract's coming up. Where I mean, we don't know, do we? Maybe a contract mm. is coming up here. We haven't had that bit confirmed. Um, so I don't know, Tom. I don't want to say anything too libelous about W's practices. They're very careful as well <laughs> on the wordings of with Fightful, because Fightful do say about a talent coming to WWE, not back to WWE. Oh. So, I mean, whether that's deliberate or not, I don't know, because it might rule out like some obvious names, you know, like your Keith Lee's, your Adam Coles and stuff like that. We're not saying those are the names, speculation forever, friend. Uh, but there are certainly some wrestlers on that AEW roster that I think WWE would be intrigued by. Yes. Who had been part Wardlow is the first one yeah. that I think of. I think Wardlow under I know I know he was very much a, a Vince McMahon, big sweaty men dot gif type wrestler, but I think even Triple H might see some magic in yeah. in, in in somebody that he could mould into like a, a, a younger Batista. I think you take any of the top acts in AEW and WWE interested and vice mm. versa. Because I think this mantra that Vince McMahon had where a thing that was created elsewhere can't be a thing in my thing because I didn't create that thing. Mm. I think that mantra will go away as we saw with Triple H's NXT when a thing was popular on the indies by and large they came in. Yes, they got a different name so they could own their ass, but their very, you know, their chutzpah, their kavorka stayed very much what was known. Mm. Mm, they, they kept the Kavorka. <laughs> Always try and keep the Kavorka. Uh, so one to keep an eye on this one. It does It does lend itself to what was talked about a week or so ago about Triple H being very aggressive as head of talent relations in terms of getting talent. I think that doesn't necessarily just mean like in terms of how they hire new talent, but also probably how they entice other talent to their mm. playground to play the game. Mm. Uh, one talent who won't be playing the game for a little while in AEW is Chris Statlander. Uh, so she was on the latest AEW Road 2 video and revealed some details of her injury and a timeline of her return. She said that it was on an a the recent episode of AEW Dark at Grand Rapids where she did a big boot and as soon as she did it, her foot and knee buckled underneath her and it turned out it was a torn, completely torn ACL and the recovery time is six to eight months post operation Operation. She says, hopefully, it'll be closer to six, considering I know what I have to do to rehab it. I've done this before. I've come back bigger, better, more galactic, and stronger than ever. Whenever my return is, I'm really looking forward to being able to feel it in the crowd. So thank you all for supporting me through this time. It's a tough break, in quite literally and metaphorically, uh, because 
but back in 2020, she had the ACL injury on her other leg yeah. um, that kept her out for almost a year. Yeah. And it's very Tegan Knox, isn't it? Yeah, it seems that certain wrestlers just have that rotten look, don't they, with a certain body part, and it appears that Chris Stant- Anders' knees is that body part for her. It's just mm-hmm. it's a rotten look, isn't it? It's just you hope it doesn't become a thing where she becomes one of those names where it's like, oh, what could have been... Yeah. So it feels like we're already getting into that sort of because it was it's the second big one, isn't it? So I don't know. Just wish her all the best, don't we? Best wishes, and we'll hopefully see you soon. We may see Santos Escobar sooner. So what's the crack with Santos after last night's heat wave? Bro? Well, last night he got twatted in the face with a big old <laughs> pipe, which meant he lost to Tony D'Angelo. He made a fantastic entrance to the ring where they're walking down the street. Every day when I'm walking down the street, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> Walked into the arena, the crowd was chatting there, Gardo. It felt like a after seeing the result of the match it felt like the entrance was like a, a, go- a goodbye mm. entrance if that makes any sort of sense a big send off sort of thing but he has been speaking on a thing and he just said thank you NXT on the Twitter machine so it does seem like he was going to go away after this one Joe Gacy replied and, and wished oh, him all the best God. as well <laughs> Just a weird out of character thing for Gacy to The one up black say. point on NXT 2.0. <laughs> oh, you leave Joe Gacy. He's terrible. What he's done to my boy, Zach Gibson, is unforgivable. Oh, that, that is pretty harsh. This yeah. City Liverpool very much in not, not a great way after seeing that. <laughs> Have you noticed that Tom does that, Joe Gacy? No, I didn't notice that. Thanks for putting that. Um, it, now, what's next for him? He's been banished from NXT. Uh, and we go back a couple of days to the WrestleMania launch party mm. where they did that show in the stadium, which looked like the full attendance for that five-star wrestling event in Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> we just missed out on having Adam Pacitti in a Rey Mysterio mask at Ray! the front. <laughs> Go get him, champ. Uh, during his interview at said launch party, I mean, Escobar being there was quite interesting to start with. Then he talked about how uh, he he was teasing a WrestleMania debut, wanted to call it Santos Mania 39. It's clever that, though. Mm, see what he did there. Yeah. Uh, and lots of speculation now pointing to Santos Escobar rocking up very likely on SmackDown. I think it's a bit of a shame that Legado as a whole, I think it's an act that works really well. It's a shame they're not going to go up to the main roster there. Because uh, I think Tony, uh, sorry, Tony has taken on the boys, hasn't he, now as part of uh, mm. his family. Family proper, so Legado's cast free on his own. Mm. Oh my god, I hope he can swim. I don't know why, um, but there we go. But uh, you get him on the main roster, I'd say. I think he's done all he can do. If you're not going to make him the champion, I think he's done all he can do in NXT now. I think now move him on to something uh, a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter. Maybe SmackDown, maybe a feud with some uh, heavy hitters there. SmackDown. SmackDown. Uh, next week on NXT, we won't see Santos Escobar, but as well as seeing the NXT UK tag title match between uh, Brooks, and Den- Brooks and Dunn slash Black and Decker. Um, I, put my, I put my drill over there now. Your drill's oh. over there, you driller killer. Oh. Uh, uh, no, so we won't, we'll see that of them defending the belts against Gallus, but there'll be a first time ever match on NXT television. Lights out. Wendy Chu, the whimsical Wendy Chu, who, of course, tricked Tiffany Stratton, big Tiffy Strats, into a darkened room last week in shades of Randy Orton. She flicked the lights off, she put her night vision goggles on, and she battered her. So they're going to take each other on in a lights out match next week, and I, for one, cannot wait. Unsanctioned, <laughs> with the lights in the arena dimmed, quite literally a lights out match. Because yeah. I think traditionally, the, the phrase, the name for lights out match, obviously see AEW do a few of these. Uh, which we'll touch on in a second. Uh, the idea being that it's unsanctioned, the company's wiping their hands of the whole thing. So it's lights out as if to go, it's after hours. We ain't have anything to do with it. If it's a fight, take it outside type thing. If you die, it's not our issue. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, but, and, and whereas WWE are going, literally, we're going to turn the lights off, which I think, which I like a lot. Um, it was suggested upstairs. You kind of balked at this. I did balk really you hard. You did balk at this. Whether or not like them running a lights out match is a little, little elbow in the ribs to AEW. Well, I just thought they've you never know, done one before, and, and AEW have done a few. I thought this is getting up towards the Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin territory in NXT 2.0. The whimsical Wendy Chu taking on Tiffy Strats, and I just think the lights out matches the the next obvious you know step in this feud. They did a great music. They did a great video package all about it that was set to music. Sadly, not my way by Limp Bizkit, but <laughs> something very close. Yeah. So yeah, it just it's an obvious solution. You know, someone who likes sleep, you would have a lights out match. Mm-hmm. I, well, I mean, that's the big the big thing, isn't it? Maybe Wendy might just fall asleep when the lights do go out and then Tiffy Stratz just gets an easy pinfall victory. I did think that might be what they do. <laughs> and I did and I did chuckle at the idea of it. Um, uh, is it lights out for a WWE Hall of Famer? Are they calling time on their career? Well, uh, this WWE Hall of Famer uh, was offered a retirement <clears throat> match, not unlike the one that we just saw with Ric Flair. So Conrad Thompson 
has been keen after the success of Ric Flair's last match to do X last match <laughs> as a recurring <laughs> pay-per-view. I think I think I think I was did this news with Adam and I said that I think they should just own the fact that they do it an annual thing. Ric Flair's last match two, <laughs> Ric Flair's last match three. I think you just own it and have him come no, out. No, because every then year. we're guaranteed to see the man literally die, <laughs> and does. I don't want to see the guy die. But a few other people outside of Ric Flair have been pitched the idea of a last match. We've heard about Mick Foley's last match. We've heard about uh, Harlem Heat's last match, which Booker T has gone, nah, and Stevie Ray's gone, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> um, Diamond Dallas Page, the latest one to be pitched this last match idea by Conrad. What did DDP say to that on the Snake Pit podcast? He said, it's nothing I'll ever do. <laughs> yes, Diamond Dallas Page. Conrad, uh, Conrad was like, you know, DDP, you'd be perfect for one of these. I was like, nah, bro, I'm good. I had my last match. It's never going to be better than that. I was lucky enough to have all my boys around me, and it was fun. I'm good with that, and that's good for you, Diamond Dallas Page. Because mm. I know DDP, he would be able to do it. He's in a fantastic physical condition for a man of his vintage. Wait for a a man of any age, age really can do those handstands, but you're on your forearms and you're like, body's like a, a cat, I'm like being held by its legs. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Picture that if you want. That made sense I'm in my try head. It with Pablo, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what DDP looks like. You pick Pablo up by the legs, the hind legs, <laughs> let him drape down, and that's what DDP looks like on his forearms. I'll do it just as Alex is walking home. What are you doing? It's for work! <laughs> <laughs> but as he says, I don't know what DDP's last match was. It was an AEW, wasn't it? Oh, God, yes. Tag match, AEW. He jumped off the top rope, didn't he? Yeah. And that was fantastic. So Got on a high. for that to be his final match and for that not to be tarnished in any way, good on you, DDP. And that is our final news story, and we won't tarnish this in any way, except to tell you there'll be more wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Would you like to bring the hammer down? Let's bring the hammer down on this, on these, on this marble tape. <laughs> He'll be very cross. Love you, bye. <laughs>